Hey there, welcome back to the Big Ski family, and uh, we are gonna do something different this week. What are we doing, Janice? We're gonna do a Q&A with the questions that you guys asked. So we have a whole bunch of questions that you guys sent in, and thank you so much for your asking, and I want you to, tell, I want you to know, what we're gonna share is just from our own experience, things the Lord has taught us over time, and we hope in some way that he can use this to be beneficial to you and your marriage, because we care so much about marriage. We love being married. Um, we're very imperfect in our marriage, but we are, by God's grace, uh, on this wonderful journey uh, of married adventure life together. So, um, I think some of the themes that came through on the questions, Janice, were around specifically families with children and how do you keep a marriage healthy and strong with all the demands of a young family and work and life and all those things. And as I thought about that question, I think it's a mindset from the very beginning that sets you up for success in marriage because you're gonna go through all kinds of seasons in your marriage. You're gonna go through pregnancies, Lord willing. You're gonna go through postpartum. You're gonna go through raising toddlers and babies that don't sleep through the night and so your lack of sleep. And Teething, lack of rest. <laughs> health challenges, right. financial difficulties, right. job, job changes, changes, careers, moves. Right, Yeah. family problems, challenges. I mean, all these dynamics. And it's like, no matter what season you're in, and you're always in a season in marriage. Mm -hmm. That's what's so crazy. I mean, and there's never like this, oh, you reach a place where you're just chilling on the beach and music is playing and your marriage is the priority and the focus. So you're building a marriage in the midst of challenging seasons. That's what marriage is, wouldn't you agree? And marriages take work. In every season. Every season. Every season. Yeah, any good marriage takes work. And I think the myth is that, oh, you know, chemistry. If I just marry the right person, I'm just gonna have. You saying we don't have chemistry? Hey, no, well, we've got chemistry. Mm -hmm. But um, so that it's gonna be um, effortless, yes. you know? No. And, uh, and the emotion is just gonna be there. But that's just not the case. People who work at their marriage, marriage works for them. Ooh, ooh, tweet that. Oh, yeah. Boom, that was so good. I haven't heard that. People that work on their marriage, marriage works for them. Yes. Marriage works for them. So this mindset that I. I think serves us a lot is that we're always intentionally thinking about our marriage. Yes. No matter what season we're in, we're evaluating our marriage. We ask some questions of each other to, to measure where we're at in the health of our marriage, specifically during challenging times yeah. or harder times because those times come and go. The question we ask continually, and some of you've heard us talk about this, what's our question? Scale of one to 10, okay, right? Yeah. Where, Where are we on a scale of one to 10? Right. And intimacy and finances Anything. and emotional connectedness. Or just overall. Just whatever, yes. Right. We can just say, literally say, Janice, where are we on a scale of one to 10 in our marriage? And we could have been up all night. We could have had a very stressful day. We could have had no time together over the last week. We could be at this place of like feeling you're distant. And you say, where are we on a scale of one to 10? That measures where we're at right now in that moment from a global perspective in our marriage and it lets us know one thing and it's not a, like it's not asking so that we can critique one another or pick on one another it's asking so the person asking can say what can i do to make it better yes. so if i ask you you give me the answer to the test that's it and i can tell you exactly what it is and then he knows how to meet that need but i think a lot of times women think that their husbands are gonna read their mind or they should know, and they don't know. We're we just know. built totally different. Our needs are just almost opposite from so each other. So many times, Yes. so many times. So I'll sit there and go, where are we on a scale of one to 10? If she tells me, say a four, I know four is not good. I wanna live, we wanna live in a seven, eight, or nine. That's really the sweet spot for our marriage. And so no matter the season you're in, you can live in a seven, eight, or nine. Now. Do we always? No. We don't live at a seven, eight, and nine all the time. What's the lowest I've ever been? Uh, the lowest he's ever been is a negative 200, so yes. yeah. You heard that right. Yeah. Negative 200. No, it's not on a scale of one to 10, but I got the point. And guess what? One of you asked this question, and I'm gonna answer it right now. Do you guys ever feel like quitting? Do you ever feel like giving up? You know, and I want you to understand something. Feel like, Quitting is an interesting feeling, right? Feelings are fickle. And yeah, in a moment, you could be like, fooey with you, right? In a frustrated moment. But have you ever thought for a moment we were gonna quit? No. 
When I walked down that aisle and I said, I do, it was forever. It's not an option. Divorce is not an option till death do us part. We don't use the word in Never our have. house. Not once. I don't think about that. It's not even an option. I'm committed till death do us part, no matter what happens. Now, what's interesting, you said I was a negative, we're at a negative 200 because yeah. of me. Most people would think. I'm sure, it's part of No, no, no. Me it, too, this but. was a very much a me thing. I was at fault and I was. Rightly, you said, hey, you were hurt, and you said negative 200. You, in that moment, were, hey, we're a negative 200, we're over. No, never. See, a lot of people think that when they hear like, oh, negative 200, well, you must be done. She's walking out the door. This is over. No, it was, even at a negative 200, I didn't fear for our marriage. No. I, I knew I needed to <laughs> be quiet and to listen and to humble myself and to learn why it hurt what I'd done to damage, whatever, but how I to just, restore. No, we just need to work through it. We yes. need to figure it out. We need to communicate. Yes. And we need to come to an understanding. That doesn't mean that we're going to be, you're going to think 100% like I do, or I'm going to think 100% like, like you do. That's right. But come to an understanding of how I feel or... And how we can progress. How we can... Because there's always a, a way... in the middle or... There's always you know? a way yes. to move, move, move it forward. So, real quick, that was just a little sideline to... Hey, do you ever think you're going to quit or whatever? Emotions come and go. We don't always feel like gushy and romantic and everything's all on this, you know, episode, like a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. But the core of us, in our heart of hearts, we know we're in it forever. We're excited about that adventure. And yes, we're working at it with a mindful intention every other moment in between. Yes. And so the question goes, when you have young kids, how do you make your marriage a priority? You start by making your marriage a priority in your heart and mind and then in your calendar. I know for me as a mother of a lot of children, it's easy to think the children are the priority. And something that I learned at a very early age is that I was a helpmate. The Bible says in Genesis that I'm a helpmate to Chad before I'm a mother to my children. And so I sit there and go, when something comes and we have to weigh it out, I need to put Chad first. And, and I want to tell you something. What that does for me when the scripture says, hey, husbands, love your wives. He's called us to love, to nourish and cherish our wives. And then he says, wives, see that you reverence or, or respect your husbands. And it's weird, but Janice, in saying what she just said to me, I feel so honored, I can't even tell you, by her. And the way she prioritizes us, because I do believe there's a lot of great parents out there who put their children above their marriage. It's and easy to get lost in your kids. It's way easier. They demand your attention. It's you know, way sometimes you just have to say, No, you're gonna sit down right now. I need time with daddy. And our kids know that he's the priority. And they know that I'm the priority. And it absolutely is right. They know that, but they also know that this serves as a foundation for us to pour into them. Yes. So it's not like we're like, oh, it's all about us, kids, whatever. No. no. They know we care deeply about them, so we need to make sure that we're okay. But it actually makes them feel secure. That's right. They love when we go out on dates because they That's know right. we're taking care of each other and That's right. I come back renewed. And what's funny, we had some questions on the dating thing. You know what? That's a good point. One yeah. of the key questions that came up around parents with young children, how do you date when you have three kids, three and under, right? I mean, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, I'll just tell you a couple things and you can kind of answer from your perspective. But I know that early on we were broke. Okay, and we didn't have the money to just fork out big bucks for babysitters, and babysitters can be kind of expensive. Yes. When you start looking Especially at hourly three rates little. and three little ones and what it takes to do that, find someone you trust, respect enough. I mean, all those things are, they're, they're a big deal. First of all, go to family. You know, some of you are going, I'm nowhere near family, right? If you have grandma and grandpa and boy, daddy and mama on my side, they were just go-to for so many years early on. Some of them, I had older siblings, even that I, aunts and uncles that we could get around to babysit, but I'll tell you what, some of you don't have family. And this is where I would advise you to, in your local fellowship, with your local body of believers, tie in with some other young families. They may have one child, they may have two, they may have three as well, but they're in the same boat you are. They have a young family. And I'm telling you what, if you have three young kids, to take on somebody else's three young kids for two hours and then put them all down, you know, in an evening or even survive a four hour episode of little ones crawling all over and whatever. Parents that you respect and love are your best resource to swap out. 
just trade. There's no dollars exchanged. It's, hey, would you watch our kids on Thursday night? We'll watch yours on the following Wednesday, whatever. And to be honest with you, it can actually be easier because the kids entertain themselves. They there's can. somebody fun. There's new kids that are over. Yep. So they're playing. They got a buddy. And so what we did in our earlier years, we had a friend, Kim and Roger, yep. that had kids at the same Similar age ages. and stage. And so we would swap out. They would go one week. We would go one week. They would go one week, you know? And, and that's a phenomenal. It was great. And, and if you don't have somebody in your local fellowship that's that way or whatever, think of people you know who might know somebody who you can become friends with. So you're able to vet those people, have a high level of trust, and you're sitting there doing a trade. And, and I just think it's, it's great economically and it's really great because those families are in the same boat you are. So if you literally, if you're going through Costco and you see a wonderful family with three kids and you connect with them, say, hey, you know, if you know, I mean, I'm telling you. If, you need to know them. Like, that, that's a little. I'm saying you get to know them. Yeah. You say, hey, okay. who are you guys? And, and <laughs> I'm not shopping for babysitters in Costco. No, my point is, We've met people at Costco that go to fellowship with us later, you know, so you yeah. can find, okay. you can find that. So anyways, just the key is, of course, they're going to bat them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's important. That sounded funny though, huh? Stand in a Costco line and find your baby. That sound very okay. funny. <laughs> That's right. crazy. Right? Anyways. Yeah. So, uh, those are some of the thoughts around babysitting. It's not like that's the only formula, but I highly recommend that. And I will say that I've loved how Chad has initiated our date times a lot of times because I can be a person that's just in the routine. Like, okay, kids are going to bed, we're doing school, we're doing this, and I just, I never think I have time to go out on a date. And he's like, we're going, let's go. And when he pulls me out of the home and we go and do something fun together, I'm always like, you're so right. I needed this. And I come back refreshed. We're closer together. And I just have really appreciated that. On about that you. point, you're, you're welcome. Yes. It's fun. It is fun. But you know what? It's funny because God puts us with people we need in our life. And Mom, Janice brings this steady, structured, administrative, consistent, follow-through world to my world, which allows us to be capable as a couple and allows us to parent our children and all these things so that her giftings are different where my job is to bring her out into some of those things and I want to tell you in your marriage there's one of you that is probably going to initiate dates more often doesn't need to be the guy it can be the gal it can be whoever has that impetus to hey we need to be getting together see that as your calling don't wait for your wife to do it if you're the guy don't wait for your husband to do it if you're the gal and you feel the call to do it one of you is going to be probably the initiator in that and I see some gals are like, well, I wish my husband would do this more often. Or the guys are like, well, my wife should plan that stuff. If the Lord put it on your heart, you guys do it and just see that you are getting that time. So there was some talk about what we do for dates. And there's a lots of free things that you can do. We did not have very much money starting out. Very. Um, very little. Very broke. Yeah. Very where, broke. Where literally hiring a babysitter or buying dinner out was really not an option. No, it wasn't. But... Something fun that we love to do, and we still love to do, is go to high-end hotels and sit in the lobby and listen to live music and just order. Don't, just don't ballet park your car. No, okay. yeah. And then order like a you know virgin pina colada or something and just enjoy each other and sit by the fireplace and go look at ocean views. You know, we've we're, been to some we're, incredible places. We're dreamers and, and we we uh, like inspiring environments. And, yes. and because you're cheap broke doesn't mean to be limit you. And, and again, hotel lobbies are public spaces in most places. There's some that are so exclusive they'll keep you out. But most of them, uh, you can literally just go park your car down the block, walk in, sit down, and have a ball. Walk Fun around time. the ground. Yeah. yeah, beautiful places, gorgeous, romantic. I mean, this is a wonderful date night hack. And if you want, I mean, take a little book bag or a backpack with your own little picnic lunch and find somewhere on the grounds because they have park benches and all these gorgeous settings and uh, picnic it up and, you know. Yeah. Anyways, it's really fun. And parks. And we're always discovering new places. Yes. Um, yes. I don't know. So cheap. Oh, yeah. Barnes & Noble. We love we bookstore. We love to go to the Barnes & Noble and he'll nights. say, hey, pick out a magazine. Let's look at books. Let's dream about you know, future house or like you know a trip we wanted to like, take yeah. or if you wanted to travel we'll go to the travel section and find a country we want to go to someday dreaming is free guys and it's fun and it provides spark and creativity in your in your romance and in your relationship you know i think about rollerblading we go running swimming at the beach bike riding these Dude, things are all free sex is free okay i'm 
He's all, he said that our whole life. It's, it's true. Hilarious. God like, thought the best free. thing up ever. When you're broke and you need joy, you know, and okay. anyways, and anyways, enough of that, but it's very true. Someone said, how do you make time for yourself with all the other things coming at you? And I want to tell you this again, it goes back to that mindset of you're going to spend your time and your money on what your true priorities are, period. In the subject. If you say your relationship is a priority, but you're not getting time to invest in each other. And, it, and I, again, the time, everybody has the same amount of time. No matter how broke you are, we all have the same amount of time. And it's what we choose to do with it. So it can be as simple as grabbing her in the morning and saying, let's get up and go for a walk together before we go to work. Get up earlier than the kids if you have to. Or put the kids to bed early and then arrange to get some time to have a conversation. We've never struggled through every crazy busy season of life, yeah. moving numerous times, career changes, crazy amounts of kids and, and coming and going and family involvement. We've always found the time to be together, both emotionally, yeah. meaning talk it out. Sometimes we stay up late, later than we should because we need to talk. We need to know each other and be known. And physically, guys, no matter how busy your season is, the intimacy of a physical relationship in a marriage is vital. It's glue. It's really important. And I know I'm saying that because, oh yeah, you chat, every, every guy wants, you know, whatever, every girl. No, it's a priority. Mm -hmm. If you're 26 years married, you should be very physically involved as much or more so than when you got married in the first place. This is not something that should fade away or disappear. Mm -hmm. And it does far too often in marriages. And they literally start prioritizing everything else mm -hmm. in life. But that emotional connection, that physical connection, vital, make it a priority. Well, intimacy is yeah. kind of the icing on the cake. And a lot of times intimacy can go south because there's unresolved feelings. Because the so cake's going bad, yeah. It's super important that you resolve negative feelings on a daily basis. Keep short accounts. Yes. Short accounts. If you've got hurt feelings, you need to talk about it. And you just say, you know, we had one the other day. It was oh, hilarious. we have them all the yeah. time. And, all the uh, time. I just said, you know, after I calmed down, so I'm like, hey, I need to talk to you. And, and uh, boy, did she talk to me. Well, <laughs> no, I just said, hey, way. the way I could see this changing is this is the way that made me feel, and I share my feelings. And, and, and we he says, well, we don't we want to get go into all that. that. We're going to do this at a different time. It's called a courageous conversation and it's a model that we learned from a ministry that's powerful and allowing people to talk through anything and get through it. And if you're halfway interested, comment below that you would like to hear more about that. But today we're going to wrap up here. I want to give just a quick summary. We're keeping this under 20 minutes yes. to respect your time. There's so much we'd love to share with you around marriage. These little secrets are little simple things, but start with this. If your marriage is truly a priority in your life, make time for it in your schedule. Make time for it with a little bit of your resources and have an intentionality about every day, connecting, keeping those short accounts. Janice mentioned that so powerfully. Scripture says, don't go to bed angry. We don't go to bed angry at each other, unresolved in angst. If we ever are at that place where we're not at a place where we can sort it out, we're both tired, we know we'd be do, do better, we can say, hey, you know what? Good night, love you, let's talk about it in the morning. You know, realizing that, hey, there's something there that we need to sort through. But at the end of the day, keeping those short accounts, having that mindset, no matter what season you're in, and realize you're always gonna be in a season. And some of them, yeah, are a little easier than others, and some are far more difficult. But in it all, there's challenge. Life is full of challenge, it's full of financial challenges, and parenting challenges, those don't go away. And if you're waiting for a day for things to get better before your marriage can get better, you gotta stop. Cause right now is the day that your marriage can be great. So you need to prioritize yeah. and put energy and intention into your relationship. Yeah. And when you work at marriage, your marriage works for it you. Works for you. I like works that. Works for you, that's good. And have sex. I'll leave you with that. Of go, go right now. <laughs> we will. I just Bye. wanted to say, if this is helpful for you in any way, shape, or form, please leave a comment below and feel free to share this with any couple you think might benefit from and needs encouragement in their marriage. 
And also, if you have further questions, we have a whole list of them and we think we'd love to do another one of these. If you'd like us to, fire your questions below and just let us know if you'd want us to do another YouTube uh, video on marriage stuff. Anyways, love ya, have a great week and talk to you soon, bye-bye.